In this video, I will show you how to write the standard form equation of a circle if you're given the radius in the center or if you are given the general form equation. I will also show you how to graph a standard form equation of a circle. The standard form equation for a circle looks like this, where h and k is the center and r is the radius. So for problem number one, the center is two comma zero. In the formula, we will have the opposite of each one of these. That's what it means when you have a minus. So because of the positive two, I will have x minus two squared. Because of the zero, this would be y minus zero, but y minus zero is just y. So we'll just have y squared. And then finally, we end with the radius squared. Since the radius is two, then the radius squared will be four. So this is the standard form equation. So this objective is pretty easy. So again, I'll just do the opposite of these two. So x minus one squared because of the uh, positive one. And then y plus two squared is equal to the radius squared, so 25. Standard form equation. It takes a little bit more effort when you're given the general form. What you need to do is complete the square in order to get these parentheses forming. Your first step, though, is to group together the like terms. So the x terms, well, I shouldn't have said like terms. Uh, these are not like terms. But they both have x's, so we need to group together the x terms. And we need to group together the y terms. All right, so those terms go together. This constant needs to be added in order to move it to the other side. So rewriting the equation, putting the x's first, I will have x squared plus 4x. I'm going to leave a little space to complete the square. Now come the y terms, so plus y squared minus 6y, leave a little space to complete the square, is equal to 23. Now when I talk about completing the square, the key is half the middle squared. Half of this is 2. 2 squared is 4. So I'm going to put a plus 4 right here. To balance out that change, I need to add 4 to the other side of the equation as well. I need to do the same thing with the y terms. Half the middle squared. Half of this is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. So I need to add 9 to the other side to balance that out. The point of completing the square is so when you factor it, you end up with the same thing twice. So this will factor as x plus 2 times x plus 2. If the middle term is positive, they will both be positive. This will factor as y minus 3 times y minus 3. If the middle term is negative, they will both be negative. So I need to add up these three numbers. Okay, they add up to 36. Because I have the same binomial twice, I can simply write x plus 2 squared. And I can write y minus 3 squared is equal to 36. And that's it. This is the standard form equation. Okay, um, which I guess I, I was supposed to write here. In retrospect, so the center will be the opposite of this and the opposite of this. So negative 2, comma, 3. This is the radius squared. So if r squared equals 36, then r must equal 6. All right, let's try number four. 
Again, we need to group together the x terms and the y terms. This constant is going to need to go to the other side, so I will subtract it. So that's going to give me um, x squared minus 10x, all right, grouping the x's together, leave a space to complete the square. Now the y terms, y squared plus 4y, leave a space. Now I'm subtracting 10 from both sides, so this is going to make negative 17. Time to complete the square. We do half the middle squared. Half of this is negative 5. Negative 5 squared is positive 25. So I immediately add 25 to the right hand side to balance out that change. For the y's I do the same thing. Half the middle squared. Half of this is 2. 2 squared is positive 4. So I will add 4 to the other side as well. So when I factor this, this will factor as x minus 5 times x minus 5. And this part will factor as y plus 2 times y plus 2. Adding up these three numbers, I'm getting 12. So because I have the same binomial twice, I can write x minus 5 squared plus y plus 2 squared is equal to 12. So there's my standard form equation. The center will be the opposite of this and the opposite of this. So positive 5 comma negative 2. Now remember this 12 is the radius squared. So the radius squared is equal to 12. So um, for that reason the radius will equal the square root of 12. We must simplify this radical. Um, because 12 is 4 times 3, then the radius is actually 2 radical 3. For number 5, we need to graph the circle whose equation is given. First, we need to figure out what the center is. It's just going to be the opposite of this. And, well, there's nothing being added or subtracted, so this one will just be 0. So the center is going to be negative 3 comma 0. Again, the negative 3 is the opposite of this. And 0, because for the y part, nothing is being added or subtracted. Now the 9 is the radius squared, which means that the radius of the circle is 3. So let's graph these things. If the center is at negative 3, 0, that means it is right here. If the radius is 3, that means if I go 3 in any direction, I should land on the circle. So now I can draw the circle. Let's do another one. Again, the center will be the opposite of this and the opposite of this. So that will be negative 2 comma negative 1. The 16 is the radius squared, which means that the radius must be 4. So if the center is at negative 2 comma negative 1, that means the center is right here. If the radius is 4, that means if I go 4 in every direction, I should land on the circle. So now I can graph the circle. All right, let's do a word problem involving circles. 
A pizza place only delivers up to a 10 mile radius from the store. If a customer lives eight miles west and six miles south of the store, can the customer order from this particular pizza place? Let's put this problem on a coordinate plane. So I have my north, south, east, and west. And uh, according to the problem, the customer lives eight miles west and six miles south of the pizza place. Uh, this is the pizza place. So eight miles west and six miles south on a coordinate plane would be the point negative eight comma negative six. Okay, so um, you know what, let me put a little house there because this is the customer. Okay, so these are the coordinates of the customer's house. Let's use the equation of the circle to figure out how far the customer is away from the pizza place. Okay, this red line is the distance from the pizza place to the house. Picture the house as being on the edge of a circle where the distance to the house is the radius of the circle. So an equation for this circle would be x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared. Uh, we don't know the radius, so I just put um, r squared for now. The, um, we just have x squared and y squared with nothing being added or subtracted in parentheses because we're letting the pizza place be at the origin, 0 comma 0. So we have a pair of coordinates. We have an x and a y. So we should be able to substitute those values into the circle e equation and find the radius. So substituting for x and y, we have negative 8 squared plus negative 6 squared should equal the radius squared. So that's going to be 64 plus 36 should equal the radius squared. This is 100 which means that the radius is 10. Uh, you can think of it as taking the square root if that makes you feel better. But the radius is 10. So now that we know the radius of this circle is 10, um, we know that the customer is 10 miles away from the pizza place. The pizza place delivers up to a 10 mile radius. So the customer is okay, and they can uh, get delivery. Whenever you solve a word problem, you should write a nice summary sentence for your final answer like this one. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe, or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.